I saw the Flash movie the day it came out, and then the box office numbers came in. They were low. I think a lot of us are kind of expecting them to go up, but not skyrocket, but a little bit go up during the weekend. And they did, but not to the point where I think DC wanted it to go. This movie flopped. I don't care if you liked it. I don't care if you hated it. The matter of the fact is, this movie, the first ever live action Flash movie, flopped. And is the lowest box office movie, I'm pretty sure this year, as of right now, is lower than Black Adam was, which was pretty low. Lower than Ant-Man 2 or 3, where the hell it's on. And it caused a Spider-Verse. Comparing to those four or five films, this film sucks. And as someone who didn't like this film really at all, besides certain big parts... I'm not surprised. Now, I think the big factor here, from just me looking at the whole scope of social media on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, I can definitely say that Ezra Miller was the main problem here. Now, if Grant had been the Flash in this movie, maybe that number might be a little bit higher. It might not even cross that budget line that they needed, but it would damn all be higher. Because one, I've seen countless people, even the day the movie came out, even today, people saying that they didn't want to go support Ezra Miller as a Flash. So they didn't go see the movie. Um, it, it, that's the number one issue right now. Ezra Miller being the Flash killed this movie. I predicted that months ago, but I got criticized for it. I, isn't that hard to figure out? This movie could have been really, really good. Now, looking away from Ezra Miller for a minute, Sasha Kali as Supergirl was the star of the movie. It wasn't even her own movie, and she starred in it. She was the best part of this film. Keaton coming back was great. Not amazing, because <laughs> they did the big hits with Let's Get Nuts and, you know, I'm Batman and those two main things. But... You want to get nuts, let's get nuts. That line was so randomly placed. It was more random than when Red Death said it in the CW show. Like, why would he just randomly say that? I, I Maybe it was this guy was already nitpicking the movie to begin with. But, like, it didn't really fit in. And then they have... And this is spoilers from the movie, by the way. If you didn't see the movie, what are you doing? Click off the movie. Or click off the movie. You should walk out of the theater if you're not watching the movie. Uh... <laughs> Just don't watch this film. Trust me, it's a load of crap and a waste of time. When I was done watching it, I feel like I wasted two hours of my life. So, if you, you know, you'd like the film, good on you. I, I rated a 5 out of 10. That's being generous. Uh, looking back at it. Um, but, Sasha Kali, amazing. Keaton, great. Things could have been better. Affleck, he was the best version of Batman that he's ever been, in my opinion. Which is kind of surprising considering how they treated Keaton in this film like a total moron. Killing him off twice the first time to suicide after trying to fly a, his plane into a shielded ship. How do you know he was shielded? Because he threw missiles at it. It, it. Come on. Batman's not a moron. And they treated Keen's family like he was a moron. I get you, what, he's not been in the field for years, but seriously? And the whole arc of this movie is Flashpoint, right? They straight up said that. In a trailer, at the end of the trailer, they showed there are three comics you should read in preparation for this movie. One of them was a tiny comic to the movie. The second one was Flashpoint. And I believe the third one may be another Flashpoint arc or a New 52 issue, whatever. Those are three comics. And I can tell you right now, uh, the Flashpoint one, you had zero reason to read that and watch this movie and say, oh yeah, that's why I read it. There's no reason to. Because this movie, while it is Flashpoint, it is so ridiculous how they executed it. The idea that Barry would go back... Keep in mind, we have zero set up here for Barry. Okay? What happened in the CW show was there were three years of setup before Flashpoint happened. Right? I don't care if I've been in Flashpoint in the CW show. And I made an argument very clear. I think it should have been longer. But... With this Barry, 
Now, who knows how long he's been around, but the emotional impact was nothing. We didn't feel anything. We didn't see his mother die. All we heard was her getting stabbed, and then one second later, oof, nothing. I Seriously? Show her dying. This let me show did it like five times. Ten times, probably. They kept, like, doing it. <laughs> Why can't the movie just show it once? Show Thawne once. Andy said it was Thawne. But then again, remember, Andy's the same guy who's now directed a new Batman movie, by the way. Which will com go to complete and utter shit, I guarantee you. Um, <laughs> how the hell did he become a director of the Batman movie? I'm sorry, but that... Not the Batman, but the new Batman DCU, that movie, Brave and the Bold, and he's directing that film. Again, how? Why? I don't know what James Gunn saw in this film that made him say, oh yeah, let's bring Andy in the fold. Good lord. Also, remember all that hype that James Gunn was like deriding this movie over? It's the best movie of the year. And then Tom Cruise came out, it's the same thing, and all these other famous actors came out, and we all got hyped. Well, some of us didn't, I didn't, really didn't. But, uh, if, you can tell they got paid off. I mean, you can't tell me all these reviews before the movie came out, they were saying, oh, the movie's so great, it's the best CBM ever. Come on. I get it, if I have certain opinions, great, you rock them. But to say this movie's a 10 out of 10? No. It, I don't know what you watch. I would love to watch it, though. Maybe without Ezra the Flash would be nice. I know this whole thing is, like, all over the place. This whole video is all over the place, and it's, like, whatever. But it needs to be discussed that Ezra Miller was not good in this movie. They, there were so many emotional scenes, like, when Keen said suicide, when he committed suicide in the movie. Uh, Ezra just said, No! Shouldn't have been like, no! <laughs> Not like high pitch, but you know what I mean? It should have been like a long no. Not like a no. And then just watch him die. And have zero emotion. The only time Ezra cried in this film, as Barry, well, two times, was one, when he's, when Barry saw his mother for the last time in that store, which I have my own opinions about how the hell the flash wouldn't even happen, which I'll talk about in a minute. And two, when... I believe it was his other self died. Does that not scream selfishness to you? Like, you just watched someone who replaced your mentor commit suicide and die twice. And you have zero emotion, but your other self dies in your arms and you're crying. Your mother, I get. With what has been going on, I get it. But crying over your past, or uh, yeah, you're literally your other dimension self that you created dies, and you start crying over it, but you won't cry over a mentor that was pretty much like yours, replaced yours, I guess I should say. And the timeline that you created, no, let's just say no, and then that's it. <laughs> really? I, I, where was the emotion? I don't care if Ezra was tired, uh, Grant has been tired on sets. And he's still committed the best emotional scenes in the entire show. He's his eight and nine. Because he's an amazing actor. I never liked Ezra as Barry long before Ezra did what they did. I haven't cared for Ezra as The Flash. I never wanted them to continue as The Flash. Now I just have more excuse to say, hey, I don't want Ezra to continue as The Flash. And the box office numbers are showing that. No one wants to support Ezra Miller right now. Now, going into the story, Flashpoint happens because Barry goes back in time and saves his mother. But in the movie, what happens is Barry puts a, uh, I think it was uh, a jar of tomatoes, wasn't it? In the cart, which then allowed Henry and Nora to be at home, which somehow prevented her death. Because the entire idea here is that when Henry left, whoever killed Nora came in and then murdered Nora. Now, if that was Thawne, right? This is my thought process here. Who would give a shit? Who would legitimately care if you're a speedster? Just say, oh, both his parents are home. I won't go in there. Really? 
What kind of Eobarthon are they making? Because this sounds a lot more cowardly than any villain that we will ever see in the DCU or any DC live action related. Because if Thawne was legitimately so afraid of going into a home to murder Barry's mother, younger Barry's mother, because his father was home? I, what? <laughs> Does that make any sense to anybody at all? It shouldn't. And how does that, if that is Thawne killing Barry's mother, how does that stop him from going into that house and murdering her mother, his mother? That makes no sense. I, really? Putting tomato juice in a cart and make sure Henry's home when Nora gets murdered magically makes her alive. That makes no sense. At all. And the entire point why Barry did it in this movie, why he created Flashpoint, or a ripoff Flashpoint, was because he couldn't get evidence to get his father out of prison. But then guess what? At the end of the film, the evidence was shown and he got out. Uh, the entire plot of this movie fell apart the second Tomato Juice came into play and the second the end of the movie came out. There was no plot built up here. If you really look at it, the entire plot was Barry being pissed he couldn't get evidence to get his father out of prison. He said to hurry back in time and make sure his life was all pitch perfect. He took a do-over. He became a god because he can't handle the truth. And, which, by the way, the time travel sequence in this movie, the stupidest crap I've ever seen. But how does time travel in the Speed Force work when you're just sitting in one air just moving your arms like a ice skater or a natural running? Which, again, Ezra Miller changes running form Twice in this film. First you see them running like normally. You know, like a normal person running. And then next clip, as it's running like a freaking ice skater. How does that make any sense? It doesn't. This movie could have been so good. But they reshot it countless times. Ezra did what they did. This movie's gonna flop no matter what. But because of what Ezra did, no one wants to support this movie. I didn't want to support it. I felt so guilty watching this film because I was supporting Ezra. They are getting paid right now. Does that really not mean anything to anyone? I know it means something to a lot of people, but they don't deserve money. They didn't do a good job in this film. Their acting was dog water. I mean, the first ever live action Flash film, and this is getting into the cameos part, you don't include Grant, you don't include John, I, you include all these other heroes, though, and the CGI looked like shit. Now, I don't really care about CGI, but it did look like shit, and it, it was utter garbage. It, not just in the cameo scene, but in a lot of the scenes. I mean, you could tell that Zod... Was really just a floating head on his body. And, I mean, you know, it was just a whole thing of what the bleep is this whole thing. Because this shouldn't have been in the movie. Most of the stuff that happened in this movie shouldn't have been in the movie or should have been explained more. The first time I watched Flash movie should have been, if it was as or another person, whatever, it should have been Barry becoming the Flash. Us learning more about Barry. And in the second movie, do Flashpoint. Not the first ever live action of Flash movie, The Flash. You do Flashpoint. That's not a multiverse movie. Which I guarantee you, the only reason it was multiverse was because uh, Cross the Spider-Verse came out the same week. Or same month, sorry. Not the same week. But I... They wanted to compete with it. You can't compete with Spider-Man with The Flash. In the multiverse movie, maybe another thing, sure, but not in the multiverse movie. Let alone Flashpoint, which is nowhere near related to the multiverse, technically, if you think about it. 
Oh, but this resets the DCU to now the DCU. Remember that. This is, this is Gunn's plan. Bringing Clooney back for whatever reason. Uh, you know. The new Batman DCU is Clooney, apparently. But they're going to recast him now and say, oh yeah, that, that post crisis made zero sense. I, and God, the humor in this movie... 90% of it was forced by Ezra. I mean, you could tell that Ezra... Like, they did enjoy saying those lines, which I'm not surprised by. But, like, what the hell? In the scene to begin the movie where Barry was saving all those kids, those babies, you put one in the microwave? I... And also, Barry didn't eat while he's saving people. Why didn't he do that beforehand? I... You know your energy is low, but you wait till you're in the middle of a scene where a bunch of babies can die. Yeah, let's take the time to eat. Because I didn't eat before. You're a superhero that moves at the speed of light. You did it in this film and you decide to stop what you're doing to eat? Come on. That's not The Flash. That's some rip-off kid version of Wally West. The Flash. The like Ginger Wally. And yes, I want there. Attack me in the comments. I don't really care. Like, and I, I don't even know if that's Wally in the comments. I, I, <laughs> I just, it is so infuriating to look at this movie as a flight to my favorite superhero of all time and legitimately say that this movie sucked and the box office is dropping because Ezra's in the movie when he shouldn't be. They shouldn't be, sorry. That's what we're dealing with. And right now, Andy apparently can't keep his mouth shut, which is nothing new. And he said that Ezra Miller will be in the second Flash movie. No! James Gunn makes that call. And if Gunn is smart, which, I mean, he really isn't. I think that's proven this point right now, like I said months ago. But again, nobody listened. Um, Ezra should be fired. They don't deserve to be in the next Flash film. But I guarantee you, if there's a second Flash film, which I'd be kind of surprised if there was, and if Ezra is starring in it, um, that movie is going to flop harder than this one did. Because you know something? Michael Keaton, Sasha Kali, they won't even be in this movie. The only reason people watch this movie most people should say, was for one, Sasha, and two, Keaton. Those are the top two of this movie was watched by people. That's what we're stuck with. No one wants to admit it. Well, not, shouldn't say no one. A very high handful of people, and by high handful, I don't mean like drug high. I mean like, you know, a high number handful of people want to... So, oh yeah, Ezra was great as a Flash in this film. So much better than Grant. Or, yeah, they were so good. Much better than the past times. They really weren't. In my opinion, they weren't. Ezra needs to be fired. Recast. That or, you kill Barry off and you bring Ginger Wally in. I mean, if you don't want to recast Ezra, just bring in a new Flash. Send Barry off into Speed Force Heaven and their Speed Force Hell for all I care. And let him rot in there. And then bring Wally West, Ginger Wally, for the first ever live action Ginger Wally Flash. That's how you do it. You don't need to do anything else. It ain't that hard. James Gunn, you have screwed up. And uh, you have broken a lot of faith in people, including mine. And uh, I'm going to very much so enjoy watching in DCU crumble beneath your boot because you think you're full of intelligence. But we really full of is full of crap and you don't really know anything how to make a good superhero franchise or how to support one either apparently because <laughs> you don't know what a good superhero movie is. Because keep in mind, James Gunn straight up said that uh, the Flash movie was quote unquote the best movie ever made. Yeah. Is that why it's failing in the box office right now? I bet so. Keep in mind, they also canceled the Batgirl movie 
Cut to Ezra. They fired Dwayne The Rock Johnson from playing Black Adam again. And he had a higher box office than Ezra's movie did. So if they keep Ezra... <laughs> yeah, you're going to be getting another rant from me. That's for damn sure. Because I love The Rock as Black Adam. I love that film. The box office sucked. And, uh, yeah. That's what we're dealing with. So, thank you so much for the video. Sorry it's a long rant, but I needed to vent about this movie. It was such a, just a, it was a crap hole from beginning to end. I mean, there was some, a lot of good things like Sasha and Keaton and Affleck and some of the cameras were cool, but it was like, why are they doing this? I mean, you know, Zod was great to see for, the, like, the two minutes that we saw him. But, I mean, overall, this movie was not great. And it sucks that it came to this. But here we are. But, again, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Have a good night. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. <laughs>